Hi, this is Nancy with Quilting with Nancy and On Point TV. Thank you all very much for joining me. It seems like it's been forever since I've done a live, so I'm a little bit, I don't know, I, I think I'm out of practice. I don't know if that's possible. In the meantime, while I wasn't here, we did have a retreat. Our retreat was really, really fun. Everybody there had such a good time. And we have decided that we will do a Quilting with Nancy On Point on the Lake retreat again next spring. It'll take place April 10 through 14. I'm pretty sure those are the dates, a so Wednesday through Sunday. Um, there'll be more information to come, but for those of you that need, you know, to save a date, now would be the time to save a date. I don't know what quilt we'll be making. I'm not sure about the menu yet, any of that kind of stuff, but I know we're going to have a retreat and we are going to limit the numbers. We decided we don't want to have 50 people at the retreat. We want to have it a little bit smaller. And generally speaking, I think that those people that were at the retreat this time would agree. It was really nice just having this small, more intimate group. Um, the facility was fabulous. Everything about it was really cool. Yep, Georgia was there. It was, it was a great time seeing people whose names I'd seen for ages now and actually meeting them and getting to know them and having dinner with them. It was great. So, on to what we're working on. So today we are finishing up the prism quilt. Now remember, this is a quilt, a block of the month, designed by Jason Yenter from In the Beginning Fabrics. It's been out for, I don't know, I want to say maybe a month and a half now. And in the first video, if you jump back just to my last live video, well, not the one where Clarence is playing cards, the one before that, if you jump to that one, um, I take you through some of the steps and the processes and how I prepared everything to actually do that quilt. I did not do a step-by-step -step on all the blocks. I did some basic information on some of the different techniques within all of the blocks and talked about the easy way to do the sashings and stuff. So let me see who Oh yeah, Athena. Howdy doody, Athena. <laughs> She's not here today. She's at home. So what we're going to work on today is the mitered border. Now there are, in the slideshow, you saw the two colorways. There's the black colorway and the blue colorway, or the blue colorway and the teal colorway, depending on how you look at it. I was just on Fireside Quilts. She has one kit remaining but she does have all the patterns, so you could always use some of your own fabrics. And she is reordering enough to do a few more kits. So if you are interested in the complete kit for this quilt, and it is a large, it's a large quilt. If it's not a king size, I'm shocked. It is a really, really big quilt. So big, I will not be quilting it myself. I will be handing it off to my friend Karen Giles. She will be quilting this for Karen, for Laura and I. Um... Hi, hi, hi. All right, so the mitered border. So let me kind of show you an idea of how this will work. So you're gonna get these four, this big piece of fabric and the fabric has four exact replicas of this miter border. Now look at it real closely here too. I want you to notice that it is not a symmetrical border. Sometimes you'll find a border print that is symmetrical, so the design goes here and here, and you're able to miter those corners so that the design looks like it's just complete, going around the corner. This is swirling and that's swirling, and you don't notice a difference. This is not the case. With this quilt, it is not symmetrical, so that means you can't get one orange flower and another orange flower going right next to each other. Let me show you what you are able to get. So these are the three border options that I did get. Um, you can see how they're not the exact same colors going from one to the next, but you do have some options. And, and I'm going to say limited options as to how you can get those. This connection I thought was great, but then you have to deal with the other side of that strip and how things come together. Um, because this quilt is rectangular instead of square, you do get a few more options with the top and the bottom as to where you are going to put your connections, all right? So step one is to tear the fabric. If you ever had a class with me, I am sure I'm looking up there. It looks like my light is gone. Okay, anyways, um, <laughs> I'm sure that I mentioned to you about the length of grain. You can tear the fabric perfectly straight every time the length of fabric. That means going along the salvage edge, right? Now, let me show you what that would look like in this case. When you are choosing to tear the fabric, sometimes 
you've got to worry about the pulling of the threads when it tears. And generally speaking, that is going to happen for a fabric that is very saturated on the top, but the back side of the fabric is very, very light. So if we look at this, oh, let me put it to this one, all right? This one, do you see how light that is on the back side? Tearing this fabric because it's so saturated on the front and whiter on the back, it made that tear what I would call not a clean tear. So you can always test those kinds of things. Typically, I would say that tearing the strips on a batik are going to be fabulous. But in this case, after you tear it, and that's going to make it more manageable, then I spray sized the whole piece. I laid it down on my ironing board and I just stiffened it all up using the spray sizing. And then I trimmed it down. So when you're looking at this um, image, what you're seeing there is I laid it down so that the quarter inch of my ruler was on the dark part of that border. So the light blue will end up in the seam allowance and the dark is where you actually can see. So if we look at the quilt behind me, um, this is the strip that's on the border. You can't quite see it from there, but there is a medium dark blue and then a dark blue. I did not show the light. So that means that when you're sewing it on, you're going to sew it on the light. So that's the preparing of your strips. You're going to tear it first, spray size, then trim the strip down to that quarter of an inch um, past that design line. Then you're gonna measure your quilt. In all my books and all my patterns, I talk about how important it is to measure the quilt, to find out what size to cut your borders. Now, with this quilt, mine ended up, if I'm not mistaken, 88 and a half by 61 and a half. No, no, no. 88 and a half and 61 and a half. So it's obviously longer than it was wider. Um, made those measurements. And then I was able to, instead of just chopping off the border at those sizes, I actually mark the border. And I think that I have done that with this piece. All right. So right here, and this is my pretend piece. Oops, let's get that out of there. All right. And it's going to be almost really, really difficult for you to see. But this is the mark that I'm going to say was my 80, 81 or 80. I can't remember. I'm going to say I've got it right here. Nope, wrong page. Excuse me while I remember what my math is. I don't remember what my math was. There it was, 82 and a half inches for my length. This measured 82 and a half inches, or actually this measured 82 and a half inches. And then you need to measure in a quarter of an inch less than that, <coughs> excuse me, a quarter of an inch less. And that is where you will actually place it on the quilt. So if we see here, let me see, let's go to, this one, I think. Nope, not that one. All right, got to go to this one. All right, so on this image, you can see where my stitching line is. My stitching line is, I could see enough from the back of the fabric that I could see where I wanted to stitch the line so that none of the light blue was showing, only that medium blue. And that nip is where I nipped it a quarter of an inch short of what the entire length of the border was. And I did the same thing when we were doing the snowflake quilt and I did the multiple strips. That's where I actually did, we, wrong picture, um, we had Bill and Athena and, and I showed you how I, you know, you take that big thing and you measure it and, and you mark it a quarter of an inch less and you mark it with a nip and you want to do that nip so that you can actually sew right past it. All right, so then once you have that done, so here I have sewed it on, now I'm gonna take for this particular style, this is a little different than what I do with the multi-strip. I'm gonna take my large ruler, this is my eight and a half inch Omni Grid that has a 45 degree angle there at the end. I'm gonna make the fold of the fabric be on that 45 degree angle. I want that to be 
very, I, I can't fudge it. There's no fudging. You want that to be a very good 45 degree angle. And so here is a close up of it. And you can see at the top there of the ruler where it's cut in a quarter of an inch. So here is the idea. All right. So if this is my strip, I've got that down. I'm going to take it and keep in mind it's been spray size. So it's a little bit stiff and it holds a crease really, really nicely. Right. So I took that. I've got my big ruler. There it is. Oh, this is actually my nine and a half, but the same idea. And I'm going to lay it down so that that design is running a really good, oh, that glare is obnoxious, isn't it? But that's running a 45 degree angle. And press it because now you get to make a design choice. Here is the second border to come on. And I need to decide where do I want my corner to hit. So when I have it on the quilt, this part is stationary on the quilt, but this strip, I can actually move back and forth until I decide where I want my design to be. Um, and there's limits because it's 66 on the top part plus the eight inch border on each side. And they gave you, I want to say, there was a lot, there was, there was enough to fudge with. You were, I was able to like slide it and go, did I want it here with the orange flower by the purple flower? Uh, no, I don't think I wanted that. So then I was able to slide this over and actually I was sliding the bottom one, not the top one, but this idea until I was like, all right, hey, I've got an, almost a complete orange flower. It looks kind of cool to me. Yeah, this orange flower is cut off, but at least this corner. Ooh, I just noticed how that scroll actually continues. I would look at this and I would go, I like this. This is where I want it. So then on the quilt below, I would do my measuring. And let's say this was my 60, 66 inches. I'm going to say came to here. I'm going to now nip at that quarter inch. And I don't think I have a pair of scissors here. So I'm just going to cut this. Don't cut this with your rotary cutter. You would do this with your scissors. Okay. I'm going to nip it. So then it's a little bit short, a quarter of an inch short and then attach that to the other side of the quilt, the top or the side, whichever the case may be, all right? So then when that is sewed on and this is sewed on, right there should be a really nice connection, all right? But nice connection isn't really good enough. I want it to be as close to exact of a 45 degree as possible. So then I'm going to pull out one of my large, and the, the glare is going to get you, so excuse the glare. Let me see if I scooch. No, if I scooch that down, I think we're still going to get it. You know, I have to have an overhead light, and it's just going to glare on us. But the idea is I'm going to find, and I can see the fold of the fabric. I'm going to run this along true. Oops, let's scooch that up so you can see what I'm pointing at. There we go. So I'm going to run this line along the light blue. You can kind of see the light blue going to bring that quarter of an inch in and now it's for me to now I got to slide it down all right there got that there now I need to make sure that this 45 is on the 45 of the quilt and I just went too far and you can know when you're getting close because we need to get this do you see where this design and this design are those need to be matched up that's a pretty big part of this whole design so if i get that one there let's go come on down nope he's not straight there there all right so now he's matched up there he's matched up at the bottom i'm gonna second guess myself measure it once hopefully and then yeah now it's good on the bottom and it's good on the top and we're at a 45. This dark line is running very, very true. This dark line is running very, very true. Now, and keep in mind with this quilt, that meant I'm holding this king size quilt on my ironing board, trying to get all this measurement right. And then I'm going to pin it just to confirm. Yep, all right, everything is good. Then I'm going to take my Roxanne's basting glue. All right. So Roxanne's basting glue, I the link in the video is taking you to the collection on Fireside. She does, did not at this point have the Roxanne's basting glue in there, but I'm sure that I'm talking about it right now and Laura is going to her computer and adding that collection there. But take, so I've pinned it here. So now I can flip this back, use some dots of Roxanne's glue. Remember dot, dot, not a lot, just a few dots here. Okay. And I'm going to press 
that so that it dries really fast. And I want to get that connection to be just as close to, I really want, because that's such a stark line. And if you're doing a design with a symmetrical look, then this gluing it is going to make it possible for you to get your designs to match up as close as possible. All right. So now I have got that on. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine. Nope, there's my quarter inch. Where's my stitching? There it is. So take it to your sewing machine. On your sewing machine, this is where I would put invisible thread, monofilament thread in the top, a fine weight thread in the bobbin, just in case it's going to peek up. You want to always be cautious of that. I'm going to put on my open toe applique foot so I can see where I'm stitching. This is exactly how I do it when I'm doing the invisible machine applique. Um, and there's a whole series on that. I mean, of the 400 videos, there's a couple of different ones where I've done the invisible machine applique. And I'm going to use a small zigzag. So the on my machine, my FAF icon, I used a 2.5 stitch length and a 1.5 stitch width so that the needle would jump on. As you can see how the left-hand side of this image is the fold. It jumped on just that far and then jumps off right onto the bottom fabric and just do a zigzag stitch all the way down that line. Then bada boom, bada bing, your um, border is done, your mitered border. I find it much easier when it's a design like this to do that invisible stitch on the miter instead of when I was doing the snowflake one with the strips where I actually um, drew the line and sewed through all those stitches. For that, I find it better to do it that way. So if you're wondering what is she talking about, it's only a month and a half maybe ago, you'll see a video where I do a multi-strip mitered border on the snowflake um, Lone Star. So check that out. These are just the two different ways that I will do a mitered border. Kind of, you know, different strokes for different folks. I'm sure everybody else has a great way of doing it too. After I've gotten the stitching done, I will press it one more time, make sure everything was right, and then I will trim off the excess fabric on the back side. And then in the case of this quilt, being as it's ginormous, um, get, prepare your backing fabric and send it to your long arm quilter because it's really too big. I have a 16 inch throat um, table model, my uh, power power quilter by Faf, but I'm not going to quilt this one by myself. It's just too big. So that's it. We're all done. Are there any questions? Hello everyone. Hi Mitzi and Athena and Mary and Georgia. Um, Oh, who is that from Northern California? Del, Del Marie. I think I got that. So I hope you enjoyed this just quick little video so that those of you that have this, you can actually finish up your quilt. I'd love to see how you're working on it. I know some of you got distracted from working on it because you were working on your retreat quilt. Thank you very much for coming, Georgia. Um, but it's it was a beautiful quilt. The fabrics are absolutely gorgeous. I don't think you can go wrong with this fabric collection. And even if you just use your own fabrics and use the pattern, the pattern was really really well written. I was very, very happy with the instructions that they did. All right. Thank you very much. Super easy. Have a great day. If you got any questions, contact me at quiltingwithnancy.com. We do have a new website now, www.quiltingwithnancy.com. Have a great evening.